Okay, I want to um, introduce somebody that has um, become part of our family, and um, I love her compassionate heart. Okay, I am their kid's favorite uncle. <laughs> True, yeah? True that, that? Right. <laughs> And we've grown to love them. And Mandy has become a sister in Christ that Lily just loves along with her other sisters in Christ. Okay, and um, they just love being around each other. How many of you just love being around people that love you? You know, you just want to hang with them. You don't have to say anything. Okay, I have a hard time with Keith. So can you guys pray for me? Okay, okay. Here's a thorn at my side. He said, little Lord. <laughs> Pain in my okole sometimes. But God is going to be calling you uh, to be compassionate, okay? What is really, really, really important is over and beyond is your love for God and love for others, okay, as you love yourself. Compassion International is something really special. So how about uh, um, you, uh, uh, I introduce uh, our sister in Christ, okay, sis, part of our ohana, okay, different mother, different father, okay, we look alike almost. <laughs> how about a uh, hand for Mandy? Thank you, man. take care of me and my little brother when my father is at work. And they fix our food and help us with our homework. Papa says we've all had to grow up fast since our mother died. But now I have someone else who is helping take care of me. Papa calls her my guardian. And at Compassion they call her my sponsor. But I like to call her my friend.
Compassion, according to Merriam-Webster's definition, is a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. That's a lot of big words. Oh, that's a lot of big words, I know. Um, but there's, there's some really horrific statistics. And I could quote a whole lot of them to you uh, quickly, though. Uh, about every minute, a child dies of malaria, a completely preventable and treatable disease. Um, 2.4 billion people live on less than $2 a day. I added up not bills like car payments and stuff like that, just basic housing needs. You know, rent, uh, our grocery bill for the month, gas for the car, electricity and water. We live on $73 a day and we don't live big in my house. That's, that's huge, you know. Um, 18,000 children under the age of five die every day. That's 18,000 every day die of conditions from poverty. That's diarrheal diseases, pneumonia, uh, malaria, tuberculosis, things that are treatable and preventable. Uh, 640 million children live without adequate shelter. And 1.1 billion people in developing countries are, don't have access to clean water. Um, uh, they did a, a, a study and said that um, all of the world's poverty could be eradicated with less than 1% of the global income. That's huge, you know. Um, I believe that, that, um, that God has a heart for people, um, for us, you know, else he wouldn't have sent Jesus, right? You know, um, there's so many scriptures that talk about how God feels about how we should take care of each other. Uh, for example, uh, Psalm 149, or 146, 9 says that the Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. Isaiah 117 says, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, and take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Um, I could go on and on and on and on about this and completely numb you. <laughs> but um, what it all comes down to for me is it's been on my heart and on my mind for a lot of years. And finally, a year ago, I adopted my first, hopefully of many, um, child. Her name is Unessi. She lives in Ecuador. She is a joy. She truly is a joy. Um, she's six years old. Um, she's creative, imaginative, compassionate. She wants to be a doctor, and I hope to see her through that. Um, compassion affords a lot of opportunities, not just for adopting a child, because that is a very long-term commitment, um, but it's so, so very important. You can not only sponsor a child, you can also, for like $79, I think, um, provide clean water for an entire lifetime for a whole family. That's, that's like a tank of gas. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, that's huge, for, just for clean water, you know? Um, you can sponsor somebody going through college, um, their leadership programs. Um, you can donate whatever you want for critical needs, you know, mothers and babies that are um, in, in certain situations. Um, you can pay for a bathroom. How big is that? Can you imagine living without a bathroom? You know, it's, it, it's just huge. There's so many opportunities. I really encourage you guys to look at the Compassion website. Um, and um, there's one last video. <laughs> it's short. And um, I just want to remind you guys of uh, Matthew 25, 36, and 40. It says, when I was naked, you gave me clothing. When I was sick, you cared for me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And then 40 says, truly, I tell you, whoever... Whatever you did for the, the least of these brothers and sisters, you did for me. My sponsor had a great impact on me, on my development, because every time I go to school, every time I do something, I always think of them and I always make them proud. Yes, I always want to make my parents proud too, but there's another set of parents that I consider that I don't want to disappoint them. I see my sponsors, Betty and Boyd, as, as my family, because uh, that's how they treated me. They treated me as one of their 
corazón. The first person that helped me believe that I could be a leader was my sponsor, who wrote me that letter and told me that they believed in me. And I thought to myself, if they believed in me and I was going to become somebody, it's true, I can actually become that somebody. And they always encouraged me just to be a good student, a good daughter, and just to keep learning as much as I could because even though in my thoughts, that maybe I will not be able to do much because I didn't have the resources, but they always put those words in my heart that I will have just a trust in God that He will, He will, He will open doors for me. I'm um, what I am today because of a stranger willing to invest in my life and show me the, the love of Christ and pray for me and encourage me each step of the way. Everyone needs compassion, right? The love of a savior. So this is really important. Uh, just to give a very short testimony. I didn't want to go to the Philippines when Compassion International said, I will pay for everything. I said, I'll go to the Philippines. <laughs> and it changed my heart there. It just met, uh, went to the, again, went to the homeland of my father and something changed in me when I, we met uh, our Compassion daughter. And what Compassion says that you might live in poverty, but poverty doesn't live in, in, in them. So that's really important. All they need is a little bit of hope and a little bit of support. We do the same things with the, the, with the Filipino pastors as we have compassionate about them and we just pray for them and we, we invest in them. If you want to really know about what compassion did in, in a heart of a person, you go talk to Keith when he met his compassion child in, in the Philippines. It was amazing. And uh, when we, I met my, our compassion daughter for the second time, she fell in love with Lilia as right away. It was just a bond and uh, something in your heart will change. When you go beyond the borders of, of this church and extend the walls of God's love everywhere. And some of you, thank you guys for considering. Okay? Um, there are so many, so many kids that need our help. Okay? Not only here, we need to have compassion for the people in our backyard. Amen to that? especially this time of season. So if you are interested in supporting, that's $38 a month, holistically, they take care of everything. Okay, health, physical, spiritual side, they take care of everything. So we visited on our last trip two Compassion Churches. It is amazing. Okay, the, the investments that you make is just outstanding. So I don't want to oversell that, but you know what? I will oversell it until you get it. Go see Compassion. Our representative is Mandy. Thank you so much for having a heart there. Okay? So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as Pastor Thane said, we pray that your words today will be implanted in good grounds, that it will nourish the hearts of those who hear it, Lord. It will grow deeper roots, Father, and have a fruit that will last forever. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys ready? How about that? <clears throat> All right, my daughter is ready. Yeah, I'm like, okay, thank you, sweetie. Yeah, all right. Last week we talked about another storm. Anybody could relate to that message? Yeah, man, boss up, yeah. But what are we going to talk about today? Something a little bit different, something from your heart, okay? It's called No Sticky Fingers. When I first, uh, when I first wrote this, it just it cracked me up because I was guilty of sticky fingers. Yeah, how many of you? know what that means. How many of you have kids with sticky fingers? Yeah, they eat something all over the place or whatever it is. And what happens? It tends to stick to their hands, right? Whatever they pick up. It's, okay. Uh, one time I had a, a sticky, um, sticky things on the bottom of my, of my shoe. And I tried to, how many of you tried to shake it off? You tried to do it and it still stays there. So you have to reach over and bend, bend over and pick it up. Okay. Well, I really think it is so wise for all of us. Okay. All of us go back to examine our present condition, okay? Whether it's uh, your health, whether it's your finances, whatever it is, it is really important, okay? Go, go back and find out the true condition of your value foundation, what you value the most. 
it is crucial that we do that or else we'll tilt in one way or the other. Okay, do we have to make some adjustments? Do we have to get rid of some of the things that have just encumbered or have, have, have slowed us down? We have to get rid of the things that have reduced our passion for Christ. Okay, remember this. Satan wants you to burn out. But God wants you to be fired up. Two different things. Okay, so what is, if, if, you're, if your passion has been reduced to just ambers, you have to really take a look at why is that happening and remove those things from your foundations before it corrupts your foundation. Amen to that? So it's really important. Okay, in Acts 1, just give you a brief synopsis. In Acts 1, Jesus comes, okay, he, he was resurrected and he was ascended to heaven. Praise God. Everybody saw over 400 witnesses. Some go, whoa, gone. Okay. At the beginning of Acts 2, the Holy Spirit enters. The people are filled with His presence. Then Peter gives a message of salvation. You know Peter, the Kolohe one that always got into trouble, always saying, you know, and God used him. Okay, for those of you who are stubborn, for those of you who are just Kolohe, a rascal people, for those of you who try to get, okay, this is a word, rambunctious. Oh, big word, yeah? <laughs> In other words, hey, not all that, okay? What is important is God will use that for his glory. Get this. Peter gives the first message. Let me, let me read that to you. It says in Acts 2, 37 to 41. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other disciples, Brothers, what shall we do? Verse 38, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, all for all whom the Lord our God will call. Man, when I read that, yes, Lord, yes. God is calling us to repent. Second Peter 3, 9 says, God wants no one to perish. He's patient, okay? All he wants, all of us to go to heaven with him. Can you hear amen? Okay, so that's really important. Now, after he did this, he said, verse 40, with many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. One day over 3,000 people. We're in. We're in. I looked at it and said, wow, talk about evangelism, right? I looked at that. Well, Lord, let it continue to happen today. Can you imagine now they sitting down, the disciple goes, 3,000. Now what? Okay, now what we do? It's just like when you're feeding, you know, God says, oh, go feed the 5,000 people. He says, oh, really? Oh, really? We don't have anything. What do we do now? So when I started to take a look at that, they received their baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were saved. Now they had to be discipled. They had to be taught a new way for your teachers. Tough, yeah, when you try to teach a new, new, uh, uh, new students, you have to go from bottom up continue to do that over and over and over again. So when I took a look at that, how do you do that? They somehow knew that these 3,000 have to be broken, had to be broken up in smaller, more manageable, more teachable groups. Okay? The teacher student ratio must have been nuts. Okay? You get 12 disciples, 3,000 people. What are you going to do with that? Okay, talk about overpopulated schools, right? So they knew they had to be broken into what we call communities. That's really important, okay? Where no one was supposed to be left behind and everyone really mattered, okay? Everyone really mattered. Everyone counts. So when I started to take a look at that, okay? When I started to pray about that, about our church, okay? Everybody's looking for a blueprint, amen? What do we do here? They try to franchise this. They try to franchise that. They try to copy this. After a while, they don't know what they're doing. There's more confusion when you start to add things on. And what happens, there's, there's people get unsettled, right? What are we going to do this week? It's called the plan of the week. Okay. It's just like football teams. If you know what? If you're going to be in one football team, you go under their values, under their teachings, under their culture. Amen? Yeah. If you are a New York fan, you don't use Seattle's game plan. You try and you know what? Everybody does it. They call audibles all the time. I don't know. What, you know what audible is? I don't know. <laughs> okay? 
to try to make adjustments along the way. Now, the foundation of a church is built on Acts 2, 42 to 47. Let me read that briefly. See if, if you capture this blueprint. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Can I hear an amen? amen. Okay. Everyone, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Remember this. Okay. You don't follow signs and wonders. Signs and wonders follow you as you follow Jesus. Amen. Really important principle. A lot of people are looking for the chicken skin. Okay. Wonder, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things they have. Look at all, the, all of the peripheral things, but not the presence of God. So really make sure that there is a presence of God, that you are awed by his word, by prayer, and see the signs and wonders, the miracles. I am so amazed by my brother's healing. That's signs and wonders following the word of God. Amen? Okay, that's really important. By the way, welcome, Uncle Dale. Have everybody say hi, Uncle Dale. Talk about a miracle. Here you go, right there, walking all over. He all busts up, but you know what? He still keep on going like the, like the bunny, right? Yeah! So welcome. Nice to see you, my brother. It's really important. Okay? So, verse 44. All believers were together and had everything in common. They sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They weren't just Sunday Christians. They were 24-7, 365 Christians. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Okay? They had potlucks. <laughs> they had people over. And you know what they did? They celebrated. They enjoyed each other's company. Praising God in every, and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. When you are living God's way, God will trust you with others and will start adding to the numbers daily. Okay? Continue to adding to the numbers. Might not be in church, but in your families, in your, in your ministries, you watch God start to move. Okay? It might not be here. It might be in the Philippines. It might be in Africa. Wherever it is, God will add to the numbers. So that's really important when you start to read that. So let me give you an abbreviated version of our core values or our culture. Number one, we're our church led by the Holy Spirit. Okay? We're going to do God things, not just good things. Really important. We're devoted to God's word and to prayer, verse 42 and 43. We're willing to share and give what we have to those in need, verse 44 and 45. We're to be true followers of Christ, committed to one another's best interests and to God's purposes. That's verses 46 to 47. So if you ever wondered what is our structure, what is our blueprint, there it is. Now, you hear me constantly try every, every time I meet you. I'm always going to ask you, what is God saying? What is God doing in your life? Why? It's because I want you to spend time with God on a personal level and meet him regularly in his word. Face to face, eyeball to eyeball, voice to voice, heart to heart. And through personal conversations with him in prayer. Talk star with God. Okay? You don't have to speak Christianese. God knows you don't have to quote scriptures or anything else. God is the author of scriptures. Just be with him. And the more you be with him, okay, the more that you will love him more deeply. To know him is to love him. And this habit, though, has to be deliberate. Like any good thing that you do, it has to be continuous over and over and over again till it becomes automatic. Prayer should be automatic, first thing. Reading the Word of God, automatic. This is what you do. That's your value, right? Whatever you do most, you will value the most. So that's really important to you, okay? Now, I want to focus in on verse 44 and 45, okay? All believers were together and had everything in common. They sold the property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Wonderful two scriptures. These verses demonstrate our love relationship with God and our care about others. Others first. When you love somebody deeply, you look for ways to serve them and to be generous. Amen? Amen. Over and beyond. It is much less about what, you, what they had, but more about how much they were willing to give away. I looked at that sometimes. Some of you, you know, uh, I, I pray for, for some of you a lot because some of you give 
of your tithes and offerings. I know that you, you know, that you don't have and you want to give more, okay? And you're working your way up to your 10% of your tithes and offerings, okay? I will not take that responsibility away from you. If I tell you to give you then less, per, uh, less than 10% or what God demands, you know what? I'm telling you that uh, I am above what God tells you. I don't care, just like the woman with the two mites. God didn't say, don't give because I know you're a widow woman and if only two mites, everything that you had to live on. You know what Jesus did? He said, hey, come, check this lady out. Man, I love what she does. Why? It's not about the money that she gave, but the heart with which she gave it. It was a sacrifice. But she understood that this world was temporary, but God is eternal. So I'm going to worship you now while I'm here on earth. To show people that I love you so much because this money is not going to take precedence over the Messiah. Amen. Okay? So as I see you guys giving, I'm really praying that you understand. Today, I'm not going to twist your arms about anything. I'm not going to talk about money or anything else. But you got to realize that Jesus prioritizes giving. In the New Testament, it talks about more about stewarding money than any other subject. More than love, more than forgiveness, more than anything else. Why? Because money is a controlling factor. It can bring blessings, it can be curses, dependent on the one who has the money. For those of you who have been in an alternate culture before you were saved, just think, how much money would you have had today if you didn't put it up your veins or up your nose? We had a men's ministry in Kauai. I asked that question. And everybody said, I went multiple houses. I wouldn't have any bills today. But it went up their noses and in their veins, and it's gone forever. Just think about that. What are the things? It couldn't be up your nose and your veins. What are the things that you're, you're not stewarding well? The money that you're spending that can be used for something else. Okay. That $5 or that $10 or that 25 cents. Can you imagine using it for God's glory? God says, I will multiply that a hundredfold return. Isn't that cool when you do that? So when I started to look, I really changed some of my spending habits. It's because sometimes what we spend on a meal, I can feed a pastor for a month. Amen. So it's prioritizing, just thinking about how can you be more of a blessing. So today I'm going to be talking about biblical generous giving. Luke 6, 8, 38 says, give and you will receive. Okay, when you give, God will give you back. Okay, he's not going to hold it back when you give. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. How, you, how, many, how many of you want that kind of blessing? More than you can handle. God says in Malachi, okay, when you give, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that your storehouses will not be able to contain what I have in store for you. Man, that's really choke. You know what I mean? So once we do it God's way, God says, you know, in Malachi, that's the only thing you can test God in. He said, test me. It's with your money. Test them out. I did. Okay, I gave what I couldn't give. You say, okay, God, you say that. God says, oh, that's what I said. I'm, a, I'm a, not a man who should lie. I am God. So when we started to give, the results of our life today is overabundance of everything. Maybe not money, but we have wonderful friends. We have a wonderful family. We have great health. We have a great future and hope. And we're going to heaven. Amen. Okay? So understand that. It's, you cannot outgive God. Impossible. Because God has... He created the universe. Okay, they just had a, had a study. 22 billion miles away. 22 billion miles away. Okay, light years away from here. The universe is still being cr created. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Can you imagine when you go to heaven, you're just going, wow, la, la. Whoa, this is huge. And this little speck of, called earth in this huge auditorium called the universe, God came for you. God came for Derek, God came for Heidi, God came for Estella. Why? God so loved the world. 
that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not but have everlasting life. Isn't it cool? When you understand that, God didn't have sticky fingers. He had open hands. What's mine is yours on condition that you love me with all of your heart. Cool, yeah, when you start to understand that. So, biblical giving. The amount that you give will determine the amount you get back, whether it's forgiveness, whether it's love, whether it's money, compassion, sir, whatever it is. It'll come back to you many times over. In other words, the returns of your investment is, it, is determined by the amount that you're willing to invest. But shaken together, you get more. Because God is not a God of addition. He's a God of multiplication. He'll multiply everything in your life. Isn't that cool when you understand that? So according to God's economics, your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over, poured into your lap. There was a peanut shop that was, I think on Baratania, an old peanut shop over there before many years ago. We used to frequent. I love boiled peanuts. We used to go to Fort Ruger, remember? Fort Ruger, man, we used to eat peanuts over there. But this little peanut shop went over there, and this lady came, we ordered peanuts. We didn't order by the pound, by the way. We ordered by the bag, small bag, medium bag, big bag, okay? She would fill it up with, with some boiled peanuts, and she would shake it. Then she would pound it on the counter. And she would put some more, and she'd shake it some more, and put it some more. And what happens when they fill the top, she would, she would seal it, okay? She said, thank you very much, and give us a little bit more to snack on. Is that generous giving or what? It's not like going to the supermarkets today, and you go buy Fritos, you buy peanuts, and, and it's more air, right? <laughs> Half of it is just air in advertisement, and you're paying for that, okay? So I looked at that. This is like God said, you know what? You cannot outgive me. What do you give me? I'm going to shake it together. I'm going to press it down and put more inside, Okay? The measure that you give, I'll give you more till it overflows on your lap. It's just like eating popcorn. You know, eating, it's hard eating popcorn because you, you grab on it, it just falls on your lap. Isn't it cool when you do that kind of stuff? God wants to do that for you, okay? Now, when I take a look at remember that old Wendy slogan? Yeah. Where the beef? <laughs> Where's the beef? More buns than hamburger. Remember that? Where's the beef? And I looked at it and I said, I wonder what is God trying to tell us? about these illustrations. What he's trying to teach us? Be generous. Watch this. Very short. Sure. Thank you, Jessalyn, by the way, by showing us this video. Thank you. Change. Can you spare some change, sir? I need to get a job? You gotta go. You need to leave? You can't do that here. Really? Really. It's the public place, it's the store. You can't panhandle out here. Could you guys spare any change, please? Oh, man. I gotta work myself. Wow, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, giving to me and everything. And uh, I want to give you $20. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I want to give to people who are giving to others. Because you're the ones that really deserve it. So that's for you. Thank you so much, man. I just came out homeless myself. Really? I just, yeah, I just got a place. So you were homeless? Just, yeah. I was actually out here trying to give people who are out there giving. So there's 25 back to you. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, brother. I appreciate you're you're that. welcome, man. Man, can I tell you something real quick? Thank you so much for giving. I'd actually like to uh, give you your dollar back plus $20. Why? Because uh, I'm actually, I'm giving to people who give. You're so kidding. the people who, who are out there giving, I think they really deserve something in return. What about you? I, uh, I'm all right. Gosh. Yeah. You want to give me that $20? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you deserve it. You it all. Yeah, you do. I pray God that you'll just open up a job, an occupation. God, we're both down, but we're not out because you're on our side. We pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's all I got, Pard. I got something for you. Okay. Don't you need this? No, it's for you. 
Thanks for the prayer, man. Yes, sir. Do good on the next one. <laughs> See you in glory, Paul. <laughs>
What's that, Horshack? Remember? Remember that? He's just saying, choose me, choose me, Lord. Men are called, few are choose, chosen. Why? Most people do volunteer, that's why. If you have a volunteer heart, it's want to be a blessing. You are the God, please choose me. Okay? When we are thankful for somebody or something or some restaurant that has given us an outstanding food or service or a great haircut, okay, some of you, you know, give your stylist hair uh, a, a tip or a better than expected yard service or house cleaning, okay, you're more than happy to give them a good tea because you appreciate their good work. Amen? When I tell you what, when I used to have a cleaning business, my customers were really high-end people. Uh, they were, you know, really high-end people. And they used to give me some, some extra money at Christmas time. It was unbelievable stuff. Why? Because they appreciated my honesty and my good work. And if you're doing a good work, you are more, I am more than welcome to give them. But I hate, you no know, 15% gratuity added onto your bill. Anybody like that? You go inside, they add on their tip already in advance, whether you like it or not. Okay, I don't frequent those restaurants, by the way, or I erase it. Tip means to ensure prompt or personal or polite service in, in, my, in my understanding. Amen to that? If I go to the restaurant and, and you know what, if the food is good but the service is lousy, uh, uh, sorry. But if, you know, sometimes the food is average but the service is wonderful, I guess what? I know that the, you know, the, the waitresses or the waiters, okay, are working on tips. So I give them more because of their personal service, their promptness and their, uh, their politeness. Okay, that's really important. It's called voluntary giving for exceptional service. Okay, what if we were like some churches? Before you were members of our church, there's a prenuptial agreement that you will give 10% off the top, period, whether you like it or not. There are many churches like that today. And many churches give multiple uh, requests for their tithe and offerings, multiple in one service. Notice that I don't do that. Because to God be all of the glory. I believe we need to develop a get to heart rather than a got to heart. A get to heart is one more willing to give while a got to heart isn't. Here's what God says, okay? When you develop a get to heart, verse 8 comes into play. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work as it is written. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Boy, that should be the end of sermon, right? If you want everything God has for you, just give them all that you, all that you have, especially your heart. Okay? The attitude will show how much you honor and appreciate God. It also tells him that you, that he can trust you and to be good stewards of the blessings that he gives you so you can bless others as well as bless yourselves. So if you're looking for financial blessings or you're looking for any other blessings, take a look at your heart first. Do you got to do it or you get to do it? That's a difference. When people, when my kids used to come, do I, do I have to do that? You know what? No, you know you don't you don't have to, but you know what? You don't get to use the car anyway. <laughs> Amen? So that's really important. Number two, God is willing to give you more than enough. Romans 9, 10, 11. Let me re read that now. He who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your stores of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Verse 11, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Keywords, supplies, increase, enlarge, enrich, enrich, generous, every, thanksgiving. Just circle that. I underline it for you. Maybe I missed one. Just whatever God's. No, whatever God puts in your heart, okay? Maybe I should uh, have renamed this message, No Stingy Fingers. Yeah? 
or kuriput. I didn't know how to spell kuriput, so I put stingy <laughs> fingers, okay? God is more than willing to bless us if we choose to be, okay, conduits of his blessings, not circuit breakers. He wants us to be a free flow of his blessings through us to bless somebody else. He doesn't mind if we take a little bit, but not everything. But we want most of his blessings channeled to somebody else. Freely give, freely give away. That's really, you know, freely receive, freely give away. That's really important. Okay. Have you ever wondered, God, why would you do that? Okay. You don't really need me, right? Because you are God, right? But why did he do, well, why did he do it? Why? Let me give you a paraphrase. We'll be more blessed when we give than we receive. Try to wrap your minds around that. It's, it's kind of kapakai. It's kind of, it's the world turned upside down. We get and we gain more when by way of giving more away. Doesn't make sense. Usually we hoard things, right? We want 4K, we want this, we want that. We, no, we want to take a look at financial st statements. God says, you know what? You can't take it with you anyway. So invest it into the kingdom of heaven. Your treasure is not on earth. Okay, your treasure should be in heaven. So in the meantime, I'll, I'll supply all of your need. Okay? The difference between, again, okay, we have to work on the in-between from the promise. Okay? In order for us to read the promise, okay, we have to know the process to getting there. The process is giving things away. Just give them away. Okay? Why? Some of us have too much, too much clothes. Give some away. Okay? We did. I tell you what. Guess what happens? We get more. We give it to the Philippines. We give it to our friends. Guess what? Okay. Oh, press it in. We need a suitcase. Guess what happens? We found the throwaways. Okay? Oh, throwaway is the end of the month. When I go down, I see suitcases. I pick it up. Why? I fill it up with clothes and I send it away or I give it away. Some people just throw toys away. I pick it up and I give it away to, to what? To whatever. To, to the what? Big brothers, big sisters. Okay, I give it away. Why? Why should you throw it and put it in the dumps? Pick it up, clean it up, and, and give it away. Okay, that's really important. My father calls it the principle of no poho. No waste, nothing good. Amen to that? So that's really important. Okay? Now, we become more like Jesus when we become more generous. God is the most generous God in the world. He owns everything, but he gave up everything. Why? Because through his generosity, he wanted to save us from our demise. He could have said, nah, you know what? Erase all of humanity. I'm going to do a do-over. But no, he said, you know what? I'll reconstruct their lives and to be more like me. For my glory, not for theirs. Many, how many of you would love an enlarged increase in your life so you can be enriched in every way and be generous in all occasions? If you say no, something's wrong with you, man. You know what I mean? All of us want to be conduits of blessings, of God's blessings. Okay? You can start by giving what you have and asking God to make you a conduit of his love blessings to all. And God loves to bless those who want to bless others. So number three, God appreciates a servant's heart. Romans 9, 12 to 15 says... This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it also, over, also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Something happens when you give somebody else. You know what? It blesses somebody else. It just overflows on people. Okay? What is really important, again, is the heart with which it overflows onto other people. Because of the service by which you have, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ, of, of Christ, and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Keywords, service, overflowing, obedience, grace, and indescribable. There are so many other benefits, and it's like a domino effect when we obey God and serve others with the blessings that we receive. The love, I love what verse 13 says, because of the service by which you have, 
Others will praise God for your obedience and that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. It aligns with Matthew 5, 16, by the way. In the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. When we give cheerfully, when we give gratefully with a get to heart, people will see the true commitment as true followers of Christ. You know why? You not only talk the talk, you walk the walk. Okay? You don't worship God with your lips only, that your heart is so far away from him. Your heart and your lips are together. Okay? Watch me. You tell people, watch me demonstrate my love for Jesus Christ. By the way that I live, by the way that I give, and who I am in Jesus Christ. Verse 15 says, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. We will be blessed beyond our wildest imagination. Just think about what would be your number one thing? What is your biggest dream? If God says you could have anything that you want, it would be granted unto you. Whatever it is, it's going to be granted to you. How many of you can dream big? Ask your kids what they want, right? The only thing that limiting their dream is you. You gotta be realistic. We don't have money. What you makes you think you can go to that college? What you makes you think we can go travel? What the, God said can, if we believe in Him and do what He says. Okay. We have to be more spiritualistic sometimes than realistic, because with God all things are possible. It's called a trust issue. Trust God with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways. And he will make your path crooked. Straight. Okay? That's really important. I don't know you. I don't know. Okay? I don't know what indescribable is, by the way. Okay? Think about the best thing. God has better things for you. Can you imagine that? God has better things for you. Think about your best golf clubs. <gasps> God has something better for you. Think about your most beautiful home. Anything. Sunken living room. Sunken bed. Sunken everything. God has better plans for you. Think about your dream vacation. Where would you go? God has something better for you. Think about being debt free. Paying off your last bill that you have forever. How would, me, how would you feel? God has something better still. God is a God of miracles. He's a God of big dreams. He's a dream releaser, if you believe him. John 14, 23 says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my command, my commands or my teachings. Love and obedience brings God's unimaginable blessings. So how do you describe God's undescribable blessings? 1 Corinthians 2.9. This is what the scripture means when they say, No eye has seen, no ears has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. So, if you really love God, hold on, it's going to be a wild ride. God has a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, 29 11. It gets into play only if you believe. Okay, Only if you believe and do the things God has asked you to do indescribable riches awaits each and every one of you. Now, that's real generosity. God's style. Amen to that? Okay. I hope this message will help you guys really take your eyes off of your, your, your problems and put it on Jesus Christ. I want Raymond to come up and um, she wants to share a song with you. It's called Love Goes On. And what's important, it talks about the dynamics of our Lord Jesus Christ and how his love just goes on and on and on. It never, never ceases. And it's, um, I, um, I just learned this yesterday. <laughs> so Rainbow is going to help me through that. And I'm just going to just play along with her. Amen? Okay. Is this working? <laughs> Yeah. 
fixed on the one who knows no end. You stand strong through all the time in the joy and in the trial. You are the beginning and the end. Your love goes on. Your love goes on. Ever our hearts will seek Jesus in everything from sky. Forever open wide. You stand strong through all the time in the joy and in the trial. You are the beginning and the end. Your love goes on. Your love goes on. Ever our hearts will seek Jesus in everything from skies to oceans. in everything from skies to oceans deep your love goes on through every rise and fall we are forever yours one thing we know is sure your love goes on and on and on ever our hearts will see jesus in everything from skies to oceans deep your love goes on Forever yours One thing we know for sure Your love goes on and on and on One thing we know for sure Your love goes on and on and on One thing we know for sure Your love goes on and on and on Thank you very much Amen. Woo, who's your daddy? <laughs> so proud of you. Let's pray. We need somebody to give us a final prayer. Okay, let me look around here. Praise you, Lord. Kelly, come. Can you close us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this great message. And thank you for that wonderful song by Raymond, her dad. Um, every Sunday, you just remind us, every day actually, but the messages that you provide Pastor Nanda with just give so much. Um, it just reaffirms how much you love us and how generous and how 
um, just pure, your love is. Um, we thank you for this great day. We thank you for all the blessings. We thank you for the wonderful people at this church. Um, and we also thank you for, I know it's November, but last month was Pastor's Appreciation Month, and we just, we really appreciate everything that Pastor Nando does and stands for in our church. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. How about a hand for the Lord? Thank you. Thank you.